Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to have a look at the arrangement view and arrangement view editing in Ableton Live 10. So we can see our clips look a little bit different as we're already aware and now there's a lot more emphasis on keyboard shortcuts and where exactly within the clips and in the arrangement that we're going to be clicking or dragging or using our different keyboard shortcuts. So if we grab the end of the clip we can extend the loop just like we'd normally be able to but what we can also now do is we can warp our audio in place within the actual arrangement. If we hold down the shift function and we look real closely, we can see that the icon is there changing. And this now allows us to warp any audio in place. So I'll just command Z to undo that now and that is going to get warped depending on the warping engine or algorithm that you use down here in the clip menu. So if I'll show you now this is in repitch mode and I'll play it again. So I'll undo that again and you can hear the effect that has on the signal. So that's the first one is the ability to shift warp by using the shift function. What we can also do is we can move clips either left or right just using the arrow keys and if we hold down command while we do this then we can move in smaller increments so we'll get that back to where it was it's also worth noting here that if I change the grid size using the command 2 and 1 shortcuts then the arrow keys are going to snap to the grid depending on its size and then I can still use the command shortcut to move in smaller increments as well. Next we can slide an actual clip within its boundaries so this gives us detail view editing from within the arrangement view. So before I show you that just let me change this back from repitch mode to complex from the warp engine and I'll show you if we actually go onto this clip and we can use the Alt and Shift buttons and what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to let us cycle through the clip because as we know clips are referenced in Ableton Live so just because we have this clip here in the arrangement it might actually be part of a much bigger clip as you can see down here in clip view. So to scroll through that like I said Alt and Shift at the same time and then we can just drag left and right. how it's cycling through and once again it's doing it in increments can go the other way and once again if we use command as well so now I'm holding alt shift command then it gives us a smoother or a fine increment we also now have the ability to be able to reverse an entire clip or even just parts of a clip just by hitting the R shortcut anywhere once we've selected a clip in the arrangement. So I'll just demonstrate now the lower half of this clip. What we can do is we can select an area and then press R and it's just going to reverse that single section. So just to show you that again because it's really useful for making intricate little percussion edits to drum loops is that we just select the area we want and we can use the command key if we want as well to do finer increments, we hit reverse and then it's only going to play that part in reverse and also add slices in as well so we have three separate clips there and then we can also just undo that as well with command Z. So like I said there, we can move the clip using this top bar but we can also now move it using this upper part here so everything on the upper half is for dragging and you can see we get the hand icon and when we go below and it turns into an arrow this is for selecting and then we've got our standard controls that we normally have if we were going to select audio so what I could do is I can select some audio here just this section and I can move that elsewhere and it's only going to copy or cut that section so if I wanted to copy that I just use the alt key I'll undo that with command Z 
could also just select this area and press Command D to duplicate it. Command Z to go back. Or Command C to copy. Command V to paste. And then once again, if I, when I'm dragging like this, if I use the command function, as you can probably guess from the other shortcuts, this allows us to fine tune in smaller increments. So if I wanted to copy that or duplicate that, just press Command D, get rid of that. Or we could just drag that elsewhere. We can drop it. We can make another selection. And if we wanted to, we can even drag that onto the drop area at the bottom and that's gonna create a new track with the same devices and drag the audio as well. So you can see it's copied that EQ8 and the same settings from the track that we've just copied that from. We also have fades. So you can see as I hover over, we get these four fades here. So we can go and extend the loop if we want. We get our fade curve, which can go up, down, forward and back. We can pull that all the way in. side as well. We can also activate and deactivate clips using the zero shortcut and now this isn't done on a clip basis it's actually done on a selection basis. And you can see here as I'm doing this once again, what this is also doing is it's creating slices as well, as if we were using the Command-E shortcut. To set our loop brace, we used to be able to make a selection and use the Command-L shortcut, which still works, but now we can also turn the loop off using the same shortcut once we've set a loop. So effectively, the Command L shortcut is now a toggle, and it's gonna to toggle it on and off unless we make a selection somewhere else. And in that case, it's gonna actually loop that new selection and then toggle that new selection until we make yet another selection. So the next change, which is really handy for anyone that does music theory or is trying to work on something like a long chord progression, or maybe they're working on a build up that has a white noise effect or anything that's got a long sustained note, things like strings and violins. So here I've got this Selena as an example. Then everyone's ran into the problem where the note isn't going to fire unless we get that note on, on the MIDI note to play first. And if we're halfway through the middle of a sustained note, then it's not going to play. So just for an example, what I'll do is I'll extend these notes and we'll do a makeshift chord change. So we've got these three notes here and what we'll do so we're just going to unfold this, we'll duplicate these notes and we'll just push them up a couple of semitones and that's going to be our makeshift chord change or our white noise sweep or whatever it happens to be. And the problem is that the playhead must be at the start of these notes for us to be able to hear it. So if I press play now, we're not going to hear any audio from this track. So for us to be able to hear your audio, like I said, it must be at the start of the note. So now Ableton's got a little bit more intelligent and it's got a mode called Chase MIDI Notes and this now means that we can have the playhead anywhere along these sustained notes and it's still going to play the audio from this clip. So it plays all the way through. The final two things we can do is we can import MIDI files and audio files directly onto these tracks from the file menu. And something worth noting here is that it doesn't work if you select a given area ready for a clip. You've got to actually just have the playhead, but no area selected or highlighted. So just to show you, it's actually greyed out at the moment. But if we click here, then we go to create and then we go import MIDI file. And then likewise, if we go to an audio track, we just click the playhead onto that track, we can go to file, 
create, import audio file. And then we can just import either audio or MIDI depending on which track we have selected. So what I'll do real quick, just to sort of demonstrate some of what we can do, let's go for, we'll go for this section here. So what we'll do is we'll loop it up and we'll just try and do a quick reverse reverb effect to show you how quickly we can edit this. So we're going to do it on this part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to use the command just to get the bit I want. And then I'm going to drag that from here down into a new audio track and we'll go for about there. We can either drop this as it is and it will cut the audio or we can hold the alt key and it will copy the audio. At this stage we can just press the R shortcut to reverse this clip and then we can find a suitable reverb to put on the track. this on 100% dry wet. So we want to be committing these effects onto that audio by freezing and flattening that track. And then we only want the very first part of this. So from about here, we want this, this part. So we can consolidate Command J. Now we can get rid of the clip that we don't need. And then we can reverse the reverb clip again and just line that up with our original vocal. So it's going to suck us in to the start of that vocal. I'm just going to move that up now. And we did consolidate this, so we're no longer referencing the original file. As you can see there, we've just got the first bit of the reverb, but we can still slide this around as we see fit and use the command shortcut to really line it up where we want it. And then if we want to, we could even time stretch this using the shift and then dragging the loop out. And that's going to time stretch depending on whatever warp engine we've set within clip view. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a compressor to our reverse reverb signal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that, we'll go for a glue compressor. I'm going to set that to sidechain to our original vocal. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that as that peaks right at the very end of the reverb, is that it's going to get squashed down by the original vocal so we don't get a massive increase of gain for that very small overlap that we have there. So it's going to keep things nice and clean. So once I've set this sidechain compressor, I'm going to let this play out. And then I'll see you in the next video where we're going to have a look at automation in Ableton Live 10.